Hey guys, finally here is the how to play galaxy video. But it is only one part, the galaxy side. For the support side I will also upload a how to play video this week. If someone have doubts how well I can play it, you can see on my galaxy glitch video how I played it 3 times in a row and I play it both the assassin side and the galaxy side. However, let's start with galaxy. Basically galaxy is very easy to play, it's only difficult if you don't know what to do. But before we take a look at what you have to do as a galaxy player, let's clear up what you have to need for it. You should already have moon and sun at class 9. In the best case of course star 2. That does not mean that it's not possible with class 8. But you will need many tries for it. That's why in the end other decks would be better to play. So, at least moon class 9 or higher. A higher moon class helps in the early game the support side to save longer and more SP. And in the late game it helps the galaxy side to survive the waves more and easier. You should also have a critical damage of 1400 or higher. Because the critical damage you have will be included in the star effect. This means that your critical damage is important for your star dice. Let's move on to the activities for the galaxy player. Like almost every game there is an early, mid and late game. As a galaxy side you have to play in the early game and the late game. The middle is not interesting for us. In the early game you have to set up your side. And in the late game you have to start playing. With or without Craig this explanation is for both. Of course we start with the early game. In the beginning try to get a sun and a moon on your board. Ok, that was lucky, again. In the beginning try to get a sun and a moon on your board. In the best case you merge your dice so that they are always next to each other. And hope for a sun and a moon next to each other. But it must not absolutely be this way. It is enough to get a high moon. There can also be a switch dice and a moon dice on the board and in the worst case also a star and a moon. The goal is to get a moon 5 pips or higher. Depending on the class sometimes a 4 pip moon is enough to survive the night. But to survive magic and lion without worries it is better to have a 5 pip moon or higher. This may sound hard but it is not. It's only hard if you buy too many dice and have too many dice on your board that you don't need. If you have a switch dice on the board, you can always try to swap to the moon if an assassin would hit the switch dice. If you have a high moon dice, you can easily survive until wave 9 and save SP. Then fill up your board completely at the start of the wave or just before the end of the wave. This makes it much easier to set up your board without the sun or moon going out all the time. I personally always prefer 4 suns, 5 moons, 1 switch and the rest star. With crack, 4 suns, 5 moons, 1 crack, 1 switch and the rest star. Some like to play it with 7 suns, but in my opinion 7 suns is unnecessary. Often not all suns is next to a moon and to get the board up to 105 pips it's always easier if you have more than 3 star dice. For example, if you have 4 or 5 star dice and the last dice that is not on 7 pips is a star dice, then you have still made it and the assassin can still make it to 7 pips during the game. So 4 suns, 5 moons, 1 switch and maybe 1 crack and the rest star. Don't forget to upgrade moon and sun to beat the night. When you set up the board, remember to try to place your suns next to your moons. For example, if you want to merge two switch dice, do it in a way that the two pip dice that results is next to the highest moon. And if possible, also swap your suns to the highest moon. So that every sun stay next to a moon. It is not a must to have one switch dice. It can also be 4 suns, 5 moon, 2 switch and 4 star 
are also free switch and freestyle. The only important thing is that you have 4 suns and 5 moons. If you have a 3 pip switch dice and a 2 pip switch dice, it is not bad to have 4 stars instead of 5. But these are emergency examples. In the best case, it stays with 4 suns, 5 moons, 1 switch and maybe 1 crack and the rest star. As I said before, 5 stars or 4 stars increases your chance to finish it without reaching 105 pips. However, then when all suns are next to one or the highest moon and your board is ready, you are done and can wait until the late game. Another personal tip from me for the mid game is to tap the lowest dice sometimes and hoping that the assassins will hit it. It's not really proven that it works but often when I tap the dice I want to hit a few times while spamming it gets a hit. You have nothing more to do for the mid game or for the early game. Let's move on to the late game. For the late game you need a little bit concentration. If your board is not yet at 105 pips but you can already use star then do not use it. Wait until the last night and use it for night so that your support can continue to save SP. When your board is finally at 105 pips and you can use star without worries, the real game is just beginning. First of all it starts slowly and will get faster and faster to have to use the effect of star. In the beginning for the bosses you can always use star on both sides to make it faster and after a curtain wave you have to use it on the mini bosses as well. Mini bosses always appear in 5 round sections. That means 5 rounds are normal mobs and 5 rounds are mini bosses in between the boss waves. So there are even only 2 mini boss waves out of 10. As an example, wave 65 is a boss wave, wave 66 is a mini boss wave. And then wave 67 is a boss wave and wave 68 is a mini boss wave. And after wave 69 it starts again with normal mobs until wave 76 then there will be again mini boss waves so only two of ten waves are exhausting and then the rest is relaxing again the only important thing is that you know when you have to use the star and from which wave you can see from which wave you need your star for the mini bosses by looking at how fast your mini boss on your side goes down or not If you have not defeated the mini boss before he reaches the end of the lane from your side, you must always use star for the mini bosses from then on. You must always wait until both mini bosses reach the middle of both lanes, and at that exact moment, you send star to hit both mini bosses as fast as possible. Then a few normal mobs will pass the lane, which gives you some time to get your star into position and make sure that all the suns are next to a moon before the next boss appears. This sounds exhausting at first, but it's only 2 rounds out of 10 where you have to be faster than normal and you start 2 times. And you also get better and better every time you do it. You should also pay attention that directly after the bosses are down, you place your stars in a way that all suns are next to a moon and you only have to switch the switch dice with a star one time to activate the star effect. That's make it really relaxing, it's only like set up star, wait for boss, activate star, set up and wait for boss again. How far you can get with galaxy depends on the class of your moon and star and your critical damage. With class 9 moon and star and crack, wave 160 plus is already possible. But because of star you can't say exactly one wave limit. Star sometimes does more and sometimes less damage. That depends on luck how well the effect hits and how many critical hits will be in the effect. However, higher classes reduce this damage margin and therefore it is much more easier that I will reach wave 160 plus with class 10 star and 11 moon than with class 10 moon and 9 star. It also happened to me last time that my galaxy was hit by night at wave 139 without crack. Even without crack I can normally reach wave 160 plus with it. Don't worry if you fail the first times because of unnecessary mistakes. The first times it was also exhausting for me but now I can play it calmly and without problems. After each galaxy match you will have it easier the next time and you will have a better eye to see and react faster. I hope this video will help many of you to make the galaxy easier for us and to make it a normal deck that everyone can play. 
a little feedback in the comments if my explanation helped you or not would be very nice. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will upload the assassin support site for Galaxy in the next few days as soon as I have finished it. Have fun at playing Galaxy my friends and see you soon.